Hello, friends, and welcome back to Philippians, Paul's letter from lockdown. We're reading chapter 3 and verses 10 and 11. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Does being a Christian only make a difference when you die, you get to go to heaven? Or should it make a difference now to how you live here on earth? I get the impression that some people would be quite content simply to have a get out of hell free card that they could carry around in their back pocket and use when needed. But then to live as their neighbours live with no higher ambitions than those of unbelievers. Is that really the Christian life? Paul clearly thought that being a Christian changes everything. I want to know Christ, he writes in verse 10. I rather like the Good News Bible's translation of that. All I want is to know Christ. I wonder how you would finish that sentence. All I want is what? I want to know Christ, says Paul. And what in particular does Paul want to know? I want to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Now, Paul is not a masochist. He doesn't love suffering, but he does love Christ. And he's prepared to suffer in order to know Christ better. That's why Paul was prepared to endure the loss of all things. That's why he was prepared to be in prison and to face a possible martyrdom. And for that, he knows he needs resurrection power. You see, Paul had learned what every Christian has to learn. that the moment you become a Christian, you're in a fight. You're up against the world, the flesh and the devil. Now, before you became a Christian, that idea sounded nonsense. It simply made no sense to you. But now you're a Christian, you know it's the truth. The moment Christ becomes your savior, the devil becomes your enemy. The world tries to squeeze you into its mold and your flesh gets very stroppy. At least mine does. My flesh says, I don't like this holiness business. I like being unholy. I like being selfish and self-indulgent. I want to give up all this holiness and, and, and live just the way I want to. There must be an easier way than this. But that's why God gives us resurrection power. That same power by which God raised Jesus from the dead is now at work in us to make us like Jesus. We are people of power, but it's not power to float above the battle. It's power to fight the battle, power to follow the way of the cross, power to serve, and if necessary, to endure and to suffer and even to die for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's true Christian experience, and Paul wants it. But it's not a gloomy story, for as Paul adds at the end of verse 11, it leads to our own resurrection. The way of the cross leads home. I want to know Christ, says Paul. The glory of the Christian life is not simply that the past is forgiven, nor even that the future is secured, but that today our present life can and should be filled with a growing knowledge of Christ in whom are found all the riches of God. It is a scandalous thing that after 47 years as a Christian, my heart is not warmer towards the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's my daily prayer that since he has loved me so much, I may learn to love him more and more. Will you join me in praying that now? Let's pray today the words of an old hymn by William Cooper. Lord, it is my chief complaint that my love is weak and faint. Yet I love thee and adore, oh, for grace to love thee more. God bless you, my friends. Bye for now.